War II witnessed the rise of a number of internal struggles for control of countries that had been occupied by Nazi Germany. Stepping into this power vacuum, the United States announced the Truman Doctrine, which offered support to Greece and Turkey in the form of financial assistance, weaponry, and troops to help train their militaries and bolster their governments against communism. Eventually, the program was expanded to include any state trying to withstand a communist takeover. The Truman Doctrine thus became a hallmark of U.S. Cold War policy. The Cold War began in Europe, but quickly spread to Asian nations of China and Korea. October 1st, 1949, Chinese Communist Party leader Mao Zedong announced the triumph of the Chinese Communists over the nationalist foes in the civil war that had been raging since 1927. When Mao Zedong established the People's Republic of China, many Americans saw this as a failure of U.S. foreign policy. Americans feared all Asia might soon fall to communists. This is where the domino theory comes in. The domino theory suggests that if one country became communist, nearby countries would also fall to communism. The United States was committed to stop and contain the spread of communism. During World War II, Japan controlled Korea. After the war, the Allies divided Korea up just like they did Germany. Korea was divided at the 38th parallel. The Soviet Union had been granted control of the northern half of the Korean Peninsula, and the United States had control of the southern portion. North Korea's leaders wished to reunify the peninsula under communist rule. In April 1950, Stalin gave permission to North Korea leader Kim Sung to invade South Korea and provide the North Koreans with weapons and military advisors. In June 1950, North Korean troops crossed the 38th parallel, the border between North and South Korea. The first major test of the U.S. policy of containment in Asia had begun. For the domino theory held that a victory by North Korea might lead to further communist expansion in South Korea, then into Vietnam, then into Bangladesh, then into Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore. The newly formed United Nations did not want that to happen. So they denounced North Korea's actions and called upon UN members to help South Korea defeat the invading forces. President Truman ordered U.S. military forces into South Korea, where they established a defensive line on the far southern part of the Korean peninsula, near the town of Busan. A U.S.-led invasion halted the North Korean advance, forcing them to retreat. As North Korean forces moved back across the 38th parallel, U.N. forces under the command of U.S. General Douglas MacArthur followed. MacArthur's goal was not only to drive the North Korean army out of South Korea, but to destroy communist North Korea as well. The North Koreans were pushed back to their border with China, when all of a sudden, China sent troops into battle to support North Korea and caught the U.S. troops by surprise. The North Koreans and Chinese drove the U.N. forces back south of the line. MacArthur urged Truman to deploy nuclear weapons against China. Truman said, um, no, we're not using those nuclear weapons again. MacArthur criticized Truman's decision, saying that, what are you, chicken? And then Truman accused MacArthur of insubordination and relieved him of command. By July 1951, the UN forces had recovered from the setbacks earlier in the year and pushed the North Koreans and Chinese forces back across the 38th parallel. Then the peace talks began. Finally, an armistice agreement was signed on July 27, 1953, and a border between North and South Korea one quite close to the original 38th parallel line was agreed upon. A demilitarized zone between the two nations was established. Hello, my name is Bill, and this is Ginevra Gryffindora, which is Amanda's dog. I am Amanda's father. In 1997 and 1998, when Amanda was a little girl, I was in the United States military and was stationed in South Korea. The reason that I was in the United States military 
and in South Korea was that North Korea and South Korea were technically still at war. The DMZ crosses 240 kilometers across the Korean peninsula. The DMZ also has more deadly landmines than any other place in the world. Located within the DMZ is a truce village known as Panmunjom. This was the site of the truce negotiations during the Korean War. While I was in Korea, I had the opportunity to visit Panmunjom. This conference site is located in a Quonset hut that sits exactly on the border. A Quonset hut is a small, lightweight, prefabricated steel structure. Inside the hut, there is a table with a line drawn across the middle of the table marking the border. On the outside of the hut, the border is clearly marked on the ground. On each side of the hut, there are two soldiers, one from North Korea and the other from South Korea. On the North Korean side, there is a tower that has snipers in it. The snipers have orders to shoot to kill anybody that attempts to enter North Korea or to kill their own soldiers if they try to defect into South Korea. While I was inside this Quonset hut, I was able to walk across the table into North Korea. If I would have done that on the outside of the, of the hut, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. Thank you and enjoy your studies of the Korean War. In the end, 5 million people died in the three-year conflict. Of these, around 36,500 were U.S. soldiers, but a majority were Korean civilians. The war in Korea came to an end, but Korea has remained divided ever since.